Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about the potential and kinetic energy chapter. That was chapter 11. We're going to really focus on potential energy kinetic, but also don't forget about this term that we uh, brought up that we said was mechanical energy, which was just the combination of potential energy and kinetic. The reason why that was important is because we said that mechanical energy is conserved for an object that's in free fall as long as you ignore air resistance. So that's pretty, uh, pretty useful to use to do some real quick calculations to figure out uh, how fast objects will be going and things like that. Let's take a, a look at a situation here where I have a pendulum. You know we had our bowling ball pendulum and we can pull this thing back and maybe it's sitting right here and I pull it back on the rope. I can define some things about this. Perhaps uh, initially this was half a meter above the ground and I'll just call that the truth for a moment and then maybe up here I'm gonna say that it was 0.7 meters above the original location but we could also say that that was 1.2 meters above the ground. And let's talk about a few things involved in this. If I give us the mass of the bowling ball and let's say 5 kilograms is the mass of the bowling ball. How much potential energy does the bowling ball have? You remember we did this a lot in class and then I always wanted you to ask me well where's the reference location? Alright fine let's call the reference location down here at the ground. How much potential energy does the bowling ball have up at this location? pretty easy to calculate. Potential energy is equal to mgh, so we're going to take our 5 kilogram ball multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared times h, 1.2 meters. That gets me a potential energy of 58.8 and that's joules. Remember I have a kilogram meter 2 meters, so this is kilogram meter squared per second squared here. That is all going to lead me to a joule. So here's my potential energy. It's 58.8 joules. Alright. How much mechanical energy do I have if that bowling ball is just hanging out there and it's just sitting at rest? Well, mechanical energy is potential plus kinetic energy. If it's sitting at rest, it doesn't have any kinetic energy whatsoever. So I could say that the mechanical energy is also equal to 58.8 joules. Then we did lots of things where I would maybe drop this ball down. And I say, all right, so now as it hits this bottom location here, how much mechanical energy does it have? The correct answer is that it still has the same value of mechanical energy. 58.8 joules because that is the thing that's conserved as long as we don't allow for any external forces like frictions. If we come down here and take a closer look at this and I say well how much potential energy do I have down here at this particular location? It's mgh. My potential energy, I'm going to leave out my units for a moment just to make it a little cleaner. 5 kilograms times 9.8 times 0 0.5. That means my potential energy down here is only 24.5 joules. Given that mechanical energy has to be conserved, I can come up here and I can say, well, this is the amount of mechanical energy I'm going to have, no matter what path of the bowling ball uh, it takes or what location I look at. So I can look at all these different locations here. That's my mechanical energy. So if I go up and I use the equation that's up at the top right, I can say that my mechanical energy of 58.8 joules is equal to the potential energy at this bottom location. That's what I'm doing this for at the moment. Plus the kinetic energy. So here's a fairly simple way for me to figure out how much kinetic energy I have. So my kinetic energy is the difference between those two numbers. It's equal to 34.3 joules. 
If I want to know how fast that bowling ball is traveling at that bottom location as it moves through, I could say my kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared from above. Now I'm going to say 34.3 joules is equal to one half five kilograms times v squared. So I'm going to take this 2 that's in a denominator, I'm going to multiply it over to the other side, then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. When I do that, I get 13.72 is equal to v squared. That means the velocity of this bowling ball is equal to 3.7 meters per second. So that's pretty useful. If you remember this stuff, you know that this was a little bit of a long approach for how I could look at this same problem. So let's take another peek. The shorter approach is to remember that you have complete control over where you want the reference location to be. And so if I look at this, there's some benefit here to me calling this the reference location. The benefit is that at the reference location, my potential energy is equal to zero. What I can do is I can now go over and figure out how much potential energy did I have up here at this highest location. My potential energy again mgh except this time I'm using my h is 0.7 so my potential energy is going to so my potential energy is going to be equal to the 5 kilograms times 9.8 times 0 0.7 meters because remember that's how high I am above the reference point so you had to remember that I assigned that as 0.7 meters originally when I do this, I find that the potential energy is equal to 34.3 joules. That number should look a little bit familiar to you from before because I can now make an argument that that is also equal to the mechanical energy as long as this object over here at this location didn't have any initial velocity. And given that mechanical energy is constant, so as this ball travels down to the low point in the path down here, I have to be able to say that all my potential energy went away. So now my kinetic energy at the bottom of the path is equal to, to what the potential energy at the top was. So now my kinetic is 34.3 joules. I could go in and I could do the same math that I did before where I use the, this kinetic energy is equal to one half uh, mv squared which was 5 times v squared and it should be no surprise that I come up with the exact same number which was 3.7 meters per second. We still haven't used our best shortcut of all which is this one up here. Remember if you want to use this equation up here you have to obey a couple things. In fact maybe three things we could call it. First this h has to be measured against the reference point, so above the reference point, and the reference point must be the lowest location that you're interested in. So in that particular case, that's the bottom of the swing in this problem. You cannot start with any initial velocity, or a different way to say that is you cannot start with any kinetic energy up here. You have to be totally converting your kinetic energy into potential energy or vice versa to use this particular equation. Also, you have to ignore air resistance. So over here, if I use this equation and I say, how fast is that bowling ball going to be going? I can simply just look at it and say it's going to be the square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times h was 0 0.7 meters. I do that math and you're going to find that it's going to be the same number conservation of energy problems like this are very redundant. They have a lot of information that can be used over and over. Let's come in, and I know this is getting a little messy over here. Let's say that I was interested in some sort of strange intermediate right here. I want to know how fast it was traveling right there. All I would do is I would change this to be my new reference location. So that's going to be my new reference location. Maybe it still started from up here and now I'm going to make up this following number. I'm going to say perhaps this time it was only falling 0.4 meters. Now what I can do, 
now that I've changed my reference location is I can go in and I can just recycle this equation and I can say in that spot so it's this intermediate spot not at the highest not at the lowest but now that I've changed my reference it's going to be something that looks like this and as the ball goes through that location it was only traveling at 2.8 meters per second let's not forget that we can always do this conservation of energy business in kind of a reverse direction let's say that I throw a ball into the air straight up in the air with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second and I want to know how high is it going to go so I'm trying to figure out the height that it's going to go maximum height what I can do here is I can play the same games that we did before I'm going to set my reference location equal to the lowest possible part of this full path the benefit in doing that is that when the ball is down here that means I have a potential energy that's equal to zero when the ball reaches its highest location and gets up here you know that it briefly stops for a moment and so it goes to a location where it has a kinetic energy equal to zero so we are just transferring from all kinetic energy initially and that's slowly going to transfer over until I get to a high location where I have a maximum potential energy those are the same requirements that we had for using this equation except in the reverse where we said alright now you let go of a ball it starts from rest how fast is it going to be going at the lowest point we're just doing the reverse so we're going to come up here and we're going to use that equation we're going to say 10 meters per second was the velocity that's going to be equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times h I need to square both sides so I now have a hundred is equal to 2 times 9.8 h this quantity here is 19.6 so I'm gonna do 100 divided by 19.6 is equal to h this ball will travel 5.1 meters alright hopefully that that works for you and as usual, if you think you got it figured out, let your computer know.